You know that part of the song you can't stop singing along with? The part that you hum to yourself after the song is over? This is one of the most important parts of music, and it's called melody. To put it simply, a melody is just a tune, something catchy and memorable. Oftentimes, a melody feels like a self-contained thing that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Let's listen to one of the world's most famous melodies. If you don't know it yet, let me introduce you to the main theme of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. This melody happens near the end of the symphony, and Beethoven repeats it over and over again. Once you listen to the symphony, it repeats so many times you'd have no trouble remembering it. Here it is. Let's listen again, and this time I want you to notice that there are basically two parts of the melody. You might think of them as a question and an answer. Like a question, the first part leaves it open, like there's more to say. The second part answers the first part by leaving a feeling of rest at the end. We call this a cadence. Were you able to hear both parts of the melody? Let's listen again. And this time I want you to pay close attention to the beginnings of each part. What did you notice about the beginning of the first part and the beginning of the second part? If you said they sound the same, you're right. It might make this easier if we could see the music. See the music? Well, yes, of course. Let's represent the notes of the melody with dots. Have you ever played Connect the Dots? Let's think of this board as the piece of music. As we move from left to right, the melody goes from beginning to end, like reading a sentence in a book. Let's think of the up and down aspect of this board as representing the high and low notes. The higher the dot appears on the board, the higher the sound. The lower the dot appears on the board, the lower the sound. Please note, high and low do not mean loud and soft. When we talk high and low, we're talking about a thing called frequency. You've probably heard in science class that sound requires vibration. Well, frequency is the rate of that vibration. If a string is playing a high sound, it's vibrating quicker than a string that's playing a low sound. Let's listen to a high sound. We would call this a high sound, and it has a high frequency. Now if we listen to this sound, whatever's making that sound is vibrating at a much slower rate. Melodies are made up of all different frequencies, which we call notes. And that's what makes melodies interesting. If we stayed on the same frequency throughout a song, the song would be a very boring one. Okay, so what if we use this board to plot the different frequencies of the notes in Beethoven's melody? Now, the first two notes are the same, so we can plot them next to each other. The next note is a little higher, so it goes up one notch. The next goes up again. Next, the frequency stays the same. Okay, here's our entire melody written out. If we follow along with the music, we can see the melody moving up and down with our drawing. And then of course our second part.
Now, what do we notice when we put the two parts next to each other? We already listened for this earlier. The first part and the second part are virtually identical at the beginning. Where do you noticing them changing? If you said right around here, you're right. In the second part, our ending is different. Let's listen to our melody again. And this time, let's look at our drawing of our melody as we listen. Now, lots of music is written down, and it's written down in a way that's a lot more complicated than this. But this gives us a way to see the general shape and to show where frequencies go from high to low. Now, let's listen one more time, and this time I'm not going to point to the dots as they happen. See if you can follow along with the frequencies as they go by. Now that we've tried that, let's work backwards. Here are three mystery melodies with dots for the notes. Now I'm going to play you a mystery melody that goes along with one of these graphic notations. You have to decide which one it is. Ready? Here it is. Can you guess? Let's listen one more time before you decide. Did you guess? If you said B, you're right. Let's play it again, and this time, try to follow along. Let's try one more time with our remaining mystery melodies. Okay, here we go again. Listen closely. Do you think you know what it is? Listen one more time before you decide. If you said A, you're right. Let's play it again while you follow along. Next time you listen to a melody, think of all the different frequencies that go into that melody. Listen to where it goes high and where it goes low and where it stays the same. Maybe you can even imagine the shape of it in your mind or on paper. Have fun with melodies, and we'll see you next time. Bye.